Developed by Atari, Klax was originally conceived as a follow-up to Tetris since they were embroiled in litigations against Nintendo at the time. Klax's developer Dave Akers said his inspirations for the game were both Tetris and Tic-Tac-Toe, and that becomes obvious once you see it. The name is said to come from the sound the tiles make when rolling across the screen. But to me, Klax sounds more like you drop the cartridge in a bucket of Legos. Anyway, what's up with Tengen's Tetris replacement? In Klax, little colored blocks come your way on a conveyor belt. Your task is to catch them by sliding your paddle, or block holder, left and right to scoop them up. If the blocks go off the end of the conveyor belt, that's a strike against you. Press down on the D-pad to speed up the conveyor belt, press up to toss the top block back on the belt, and press A to drop the blocks on your paddle into the bin. You can stack and hold up to five blocks on your paddle, and it's up to you where you choose to drop them. Here's where the tic-tac-toe strategy comes into play. Each level has its own special goal you must meet. For example, a level may require you to get a certain number of claxes to win. A clax is just when three same colored blocks are together in tic-tac-toe form, like three straight up and down, three in a row, or three diagonally. Some levels may specifically ask you to get a certain number of just diagonals. There are levels where you're just supposed to catch a specific number of blocks, and on these your goal is survival. Get claxes while you can, but keep the bin clean so you have places for blocks to go. Other levels are all about points, and the manual shows the different point values assigned to each sort of pattern you could come up with. If you have the wherewithal, time, and space to plan out a strategy, that is, at some point the amount of tiles coming at you on the conveyor at once will become overwhelming, and you'll need to react in the moment to prevail. There are some interesting options in the game's menu. You can choose to switch off the drop meter, which should help you practice as a beginner. You can adjust the difficulty, as well as turn ramping on and off. Ramping is the graduation of difficulty from one stage to the next, and you can actually turn that off, which is definitely unique for these types of games. There's also a separate menu beneath called Stuff, where you can play a completely different game called Blob Ball. Even the manual is confused about it. Blob Ball has no relationship whatsoever to the rest of Klax. It's sort of just here. Well, okay then. Klax is quite an addictive experience, and the NES port is really well done. I ended up at like level 72 at some point, and then realized I had been playing it for a couple hours. Different goals for each level keeps the game fresh as it goes, and as you'd expect, it doesn't take long for the difficulty to pick up. If you want to beat this one, you have to hang around for 100 levels, which is absolutely no small feat, but you'll have fun trying. Keep an eye out for opportunities to warp ahead, and thankfully there's infinite continues here to keep the wind in your sails. Klax truly is a lot of fun, and thanks to a gazillion ports, you can play it on just about anything, including the Game Boy, the Sega Master System, the Sega Genesis, the Sega Game Gear, the TurboGrafx-16, and of course, the arcades, just to name a few. Well, that's all for Klax. Don't drop your NES games, and thanks for watching.